Good evening, all. Uh, welcome to the Tuesday, September 10th Select Board meeting. This meeting will be broadcast live and recorded by Foxborough Cable Access. We'll start with the Pledge of, Alleg Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Dumas, would you lead us? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, visible liberty and justice for all. Do we have anyone here tonight for citizens input? No, Katie, anybody uh, online? Okay. Uh, let's go to number two. Okay. Um, Chris, do you, Chris, you want to come up? So, um, uh, Chris Gallagher, everyone knows our DPW director, is um, going to be talking about some road closures, and then we're going to go right in, into you afterwards with the uh, special town meeting warrant. So. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks, Chris. Good evening. Um, so I'm here to talk a little bit about construction and our traffic management throughout Foxborough. Um, we did have an incident the first day of school where one of the contractors um, took it upon themselves to close a road, preventing a school bus from getting down it. Um, caused a little bit of chaos with the transportation department. Um, they were told Friday before the weekend that there were no road closures on Tuesday. It was the first day of school. Um, I thought it was clear. Um, kind of a perfect storm where we also had an out-of-town sheriff doing the police detail um, who did not help the situation getting school buses through new bus driver who somebody a little more seasoned may have stood their ground until cones were moved or equipment was moved um, as well as I was at an out-of-town appointment that morning um, and didn't have eyes on that contractor that morning so um, project has since wrapped up on Mechanic Street, so there are no more detours or road closures on Mechanic Street for that sidewalk project. Um, have had a, quite a few conversations with Lynn, the transportation manager, um, about any other road closures in town, other construction projects going on. Have had conversations with Walsh and Feeney and LAL and all the police details that I find every morning um, that school buses will make their way through and that they have to make accommodations for those school buses. Um, there was another incident with um, at Walnut Street yesterday, again with um, some confusion with the traffic, the way the traffic pattern was set up at 140 and Walnut Street and whether the buses get through or not. Um, so that has been resolved with both, again, the contractor and um, the police details that are out there um, on a daily basis that the buses need to be able to make that turn on the Walnut Terrace and then come back out and go towards the schools that they're heading towards. Um, in general, it's, <clears throat> it'll be a, a larger conversation on a daily basis with the transportation manager if there's anything projected to be closed or knowing, just her knowing where the construction is, she can relay that to the bus drivers that yes, there may be a road close sign, but you'll be able to get around it. Um, to make sure that they can pick up those kids um, at various locations. <clears throat> so um, it kind of, it, it came to a head on the first day of school, unfortunately. Um, we've had quite a few conversations. I've talked to Dr. Beardos as well about the situation. Um, and we are doing everything we can on a daily basis to make sure it doesn't happen again. So, so if you don't mind. No, go right ahead. Um, so Chris, I understand that basically we've had three incidences now uh, where there's been either road closures or, you know, um, setups where the buses couldn't go through. And, you know, in advance, they had conversations with you, but you didn't believe there was going to be an issue. But then the contractors did certain things on their own. So my concern here is not your activity or your communications with the bus coordinator, but those need to be good, is that who is monitoring these contractors to make sure they don't go rogue on us and yep. do whatever they want to do obviously they're going to do what's easiest for them we all know that but you know in in and quite honestly it, it the only reason i'm saying this is i know it, it really upset a number of parents to the point where some parents are, are driving their own kids they're not even trusting the buses now um so i think that's you know it's one of those things that uh and it always happens the first day of school is always something. It, I don't care what it is, whether it's our connection at the charter school or, or you know, on a, a route in town. So, um, you know, whatever you can do that either you or, you know, one of your staff members is on a site wherever they're going to have construction yep. on the roads, uh, especially early in the morning type of thing, just to make sure. Because like you said, you, get a, you don't know who's going to fill the detail. 
Right. You never really know that. Yep. So if somebody else goes in there, like a sheriff from, you know, Norfolk County or right. somebody from Plainville who doesn't have the same, you know, understanding of our town, um, it, it's going to create, not just for schools, but also for people trying to get around town. The first time I ran into it myself, and the thing that was the most disturbing to me was if I didn't know this town, there was no detour signs. Mm -hmm. So somebody coming through town trying to figure out where am I going, I just turned around, I went back around the common, came around the other side of the sure. road and, and went through. But not everybody knew that. Right. Uh, and I watched a lot of cars just <clears throat> kind of sit there and, and look at it. So, again, I know you didn't know it was going to happen. I know it wasn't something, but it, it's one of those things I think that is, if it's going to be especially on main roads, your, somebody in your department has to have a Yep, look and at I, I, you know, I personally went out to Walnut Street this morning, um, talked with the foreman, talked with the police officers, stood there while bus four came down 140, made the right turn to make onto Walnut Terrace to make sure they get there. Um, you know, between myself, Lance, the highway supervisor, um, we'll spread out in the mornings and just make those connections with the contractors. Just even the gas company there down on Pine Acres and Cross Street. Um, when I talked to him, he's like, nope, I know the bus is coming at 820. I'm ready, standing here, ready to move the barricade. Um, so he had been keeping an eye out for it as well. Um, so it's, it's spreading out throughout the town because, you know, and, and it's that connection with once the bus driver sees a problem, they should stop. And we've had that conversation with Lynn. Stop, make the phone call to her over the radio, and we'll get whoever the police detail is to, to make that connection and, and get them through to get the kids. Great. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? I, I have a question, but not on this. So <laughs> I, I'm not sure if you have more on this. Um, no, I mean, it's, you know, it, we have been having large conversations, uh, you know, since Lynn took over, all my supervisors have her phone number. Um, so if it's something that we're impacting, if the tree and park realizes there's a tree down as we get into different weather events, um, we have each of my supervisors have her contact so they can make that connection without having to go through me. Um, and they do um, on a regular basis as we're doing construction. Um, and I know uh, Moore has been working um, on some options for outreach with transportation and, and IT to figure out if there's a last minute thing, is there a best way to get in touch with parents on a certain bus route, whether that bus stop needs to be moved to the end of a street or how to make those connections kind of in that last minute um, connection. Has this been a, a either in, in your experience on the schools or Chris, um, since you've been here, have, have we had a problem like this before? You know, like- <coughs> We've had different things. I mean, we had the West Street. Right. Um, yeah. You know, fiasco when that, and that was just, obviously, once you close any part of West Street, there's no easy way around. Yeah. yeah. So for us to get to somebody that's on the Rentham border side um, with West Street closed, it would take a bus 15, 20 minutes um, out of its route to get there. Yeah. So, and, and again, it, it's, it seems with most of these contractors, most of the issue is that we're not getting the contractors until the end of the summer uh, based on their <coughs> schedules. And it's, it's always jammed right up against school. So. Yeah. Yeah, we did manage to get um, the majority of our paving done, um, you know, between the end of school and now West Street was a big one that I made sure that we completed that before Labor Day. Um, you know, the the sidewalk contractors and even the paving they're they're working for 24 plus towns within just the group that we bid our projects through, never mind the rest of the state. Yeah. Um, so LAL, the sidewalk contractor was one. They started that mechanic street project two construction seasons ago and then we didn't get them back last year because they just they committed to other towns um so you know when they came in the second week of august you know to say no means we're not going to see them again Understood. so yeah. um you know and they did they wrapped up quick they moved quick on that project and you know we were the third day of school they were done on on mechanic street and out of the way so they're working across the street now on on market rock hill centennial street doing curbing and sidewalks over there um, and then I'm hoping, hoping to get paving in before the end of the end of the fall. Um, if not, that'll be first thing in the spring. Yeah, a, lo a lot more goes into it. Like I, you know, when when you just mentioned about, you know, trying to get it done in the summertime because of school, something I never, never would have, would have thought of. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously there's a lot that goes into it. Well, we appreciate you coming. We appreciate you. You know, um, like Bill said, there were a lot of upset parents and um, I mean I, I hope they just know like everyone's trying their best uh, you know and, and you learn from mistakes so we'll you know we'll, yeah. we'll pick it up pick it up from now and and hopefully we won't see it again so good I had a question yeah. you just brought up Market Street um, when there were road closures 
Where are they published besides um, Uptown Happenings, or are they published, are they always up on the town website? Road closures. Your so website. We do advanced. have the the DPW page does have a um, projects update section to it. So you know we try to every Friday. Lance tries to get in there and put updates for what's happening the next week. Um, we do work with more when we know that you know there's going to be a long term closure or even short term to get something on Facebook. Um, you know it could be better. It's kind of hit or miss. Um, you know something like Market Street, they put the road close signs there. They're only working on half of the road. They know that they have to let traffic by. You know, they can't keep that section of Market Street closed because you have Bank of America who exits out the back. You have Judy's Flowers who exits out. They can't. They have to let traffic by. Um, so there are, you know, ways around. It should be, you know, close to through traffic. Um, I think it was that, closed, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you said, it should say close to through traffic yeah. versus yeah. closed. Yeah. So. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Anybody else say anything? Nope. All right, we'll head on to Elm Street. All right, um, so before you, um, I guess as a way of an update, the DPW expansion project has officially kicked off. Um, the tree clearing crew was in this morning. In about <coughs> two hours, they had probably 40 pine trees down on the ground through the chipper and they were done. Um, so that land clearing has been completed as of today. Um, next week, they will be beginning the site work, including the um, subcontractor for the underground storage tanks removal. Um, they should be on site to start that removal process of that existing fuel island, um, pulling that out of the ground, as well as other site work, putting the erosion control in place, um, some of the drainage structures. They'll start some of the actual site work on that infrastructure. Um, to go along with that, what you have before you is a, a grant of license between the town of Foxborough and National Grid. Um, Massachusetts Electric Company. Um, this license allows National Grid to enter our property at 70 Elm Street, put a new permanent underground electrical um, service in along with their transformer on the site. Um, this is something that will, the license will carry us through until we go to town meeting and I'll bring a warrant forward to make this a permanent easement. Um, something <coughs> National Grid does now is any um, utility work, underground utility work on pro private property, in this case, the town of Foxborough's public property, um, needs a permanent easement to have that in that location. So um, knowing that we have to do that at a town meeting, they're good, legal's good with a grant of license, which allows us to do that, do the design work, do any installation work in the, in the short term, knowing that that easement is coming forward through town meeting process. This is consistent with every building project we've done in town. We, we grant, the board granted a, um, an easement for the high school when we, we needed the new um, update for the uh, utilities there. We had to grant an easement for the borough school uh, when, again, we redid that. So it's, it's consistent with what their approach is on, on all the properties, and it really is just they don't want to get um, in trouble for entering a site or doing work on a site that technically they don't have some kind of not ownership but some control capability on and that's what the easements do for anybody um, obviously the town has utility easements all over as far as for sewer and stuff like that but so the, the electric company is no different than us uh, in that sense okay anybody else have no. any questions for Chris mm -hmm. motion do have a motion. Is there a motion on that one? Motion to approve the temporary license for the conveyance of electrical easement at 70 Elm Street. Second. Any other discussion? Cool. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. All right. I think that's Thank it for Chris. me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Good night. Okay. Hi there. How are you? Okay, so now we have um, street name recommendations from the Historical Commission. Um, actually, I'm from the planning department. Well, I, I would say that, but it, that's what it says. But I'm like, I know you're from planning. So you're, you're bringing forward I'm the, bringing forward the recommendations the list, yes. from the Historical Yeah, from Historical okay. Commission. Uh, we are the people that uh, give the, uh, the subdivision uh, developers the, uh, the, the names to use. And... Uh, we had uh, been working off of a very, very old list. 
and, uh, and Mr. Kaiser's uh, prodding the um, uh, historical commission work with uh, the uh, veteran services officer in uh, producing this list. So we would like to request that the uh, select board approve the list so that we can provide them to the uh, potential developers or subdivisions. So can I ask you a question? Yep. In looking at the list, obviously, it's, it's very nice in that they they give the ranks of the individuals and stuff. Would the street be like we see it in, in naming? So, you know, would it be PFC? Uh, that is their request. That, that is what the assignment will be. So the, the streets will be named like Second Lieutenant Gerald F. Kinsman um, in the, the street. Um, sign will have the, the full name. Um, it is, I think, up to uh, uh, public safety as to how they say, want is, to designate uh, that, that the... Was, that's exactly what I was thinking about. You get a name this long and you got an emergency and um, so... We, we do have a Lieutenant Anderson Drive and I think that that's, that's a whole name is, is all is used um, by everybody. Um, but that, but that is the request: is that the full name be used as the legal name of the street? So that was a, a great question. So I, I wonder. So if there was an emergency and someone said, um, "Well, and, and I'm on Gerald Metcalf," like w you know, would um, would you, you think? Well, I know, probably, I'm probably looking at I, you, I but, but I guess this would be a question for SEMREC, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, um, and also, just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. so these are all the names, and then there'll be a street, lane, way. Usually it depends on the length of the road, okay. whether or not it's way or lane. Okay. Um, so that's, that's what determines you know, what the, the type of road that it is. Um, they did provide us with a, um, a uh, description of each of the, of the persons named and where in town they, they lived. So they would prefer, you know, general location where they lived is the the the, uh, the roads. Right now, we have one subdivision that was recently approved that's been given um, the uh, uh, second lieutenant general Kinsman's name, and uh, there's a subdivision on east in East Foxborough, and there's another subdivision in East Foxborough that the planning board is looking at, and uh, and that will be given the uh, PFC Terry L. Baldwin name. So we do have two. Uh, uh, subdivisions in East Foxborough that are giving names from East Foxborough. Yeah, I, um, and I know it, we're, we're way into the process, but now we're, I just always assumed, and I know we're not supposed to assume, uh, that it would be Kinsman Lane or Baldwin Lane mm -hmm. with a plaque that maybe had the full description on top or below. Mm -hmm. That's just what I thought it would be. Because uh, I agree with, uh, you know, the big long name right. for public safety and, and, and 911 uh, might be a little uh, confusing and mm -hmm. hard. So mm -hmm. my opinion would be to just have the last name and somehow put a plaque All above right, that... it or below it to signify who, who it's being named okay. after. I, I will present that to, uh, to the uh, Historical Commission. Um, yeah, that's yeah. 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 That's what suggestion. I agree with you. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's. I get very nervous because in an emergency, people forget yeah. things, you know. So if they said something wrong, we have some. We have a couple streets in town that are very close in names, and you could send someone to the absolute wrong, you know, wrong part of town. So yes. um, I would just like to see, but but I do. I would like to see recognition, and maybe even on the sign having the symbol of a veteran. Yeah. you know, yeah. thing on the actual street sign. Mm -hmm. So, so we're still hitting the honoring. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know? absolutely. Well, plus I wonder, like, say GPS or something. If you didn't put the whole thing in, like, would it, would it pick up? Or I, I'm, I'm not sure. These are just yeah. like questions. Dennis, do you guys have some? Uh, <coughs> no, I think it's an excellent suggestion. Yeah. Have right. you talked to the police yet about this, or has the historical gone to the police with with these names? Yes. And they've approved it. Yes. Yes. As is. Yeah. Well, I I don't want to. I, th I think it's a this is a, a it's a good discussion to yeah. have, and uh, um, 
I, I would like for you to at least approve the names, and then oh, you know uh, uh, we can yeah, no do question. work on the other things. Right. Yeah. It, you know, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. After that, it's just making sure everybody's on the same page with how easy it would be. And how in, a, in an emergency yeah. situation. Yeah. So, right. so you you just so it ha these have this has gone to public safety. I believe so. Yes. And, okay. Well, and, and that'll be good. We can maybe check in check in with them. Um, I I think it is a little long myself. I agree with everything everything the doc mentioned, and um, but I think yeah we could definitely approve the names tonight. But yeah. I, I'd like to have further conversation before there. Um, before it's in stone that they're going to be that they're going to be like this, mm -hmm. and um, the other the other question I just want to make sure we um, I know when this came up uh, there was a, a gentleman here wanted to name name a, a street that they had just you know it was going to be his street so I just want to refresh that the, these will be the names nobody will be able to come before us with if they have a piece of that's that's when this came yeah. up no, they have a piece developer of coming in front of us and yeah. naming it after their son yeah because they want to yeah because right. that's i think how this conversation Correct. began right okay perfect i just and i was trying to remember if that was if that was before um we had some new board members or not so i just wanted to re just refresh on that okay so, so is there so, a vote on this yeah yep. Deb, you want to make a motion motion to approve the list of future town road names town road name yeah Second. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. But I would like to get some input down the road from Chief, yeah. Yeah, both just Chiefs to, and yeah. Uh, Samrak. Yeah. 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 Before the first one's named. Exactly. So Okay, be with me. We have new computers tonight, so <laughs> we're navigating <laughs> navigating around. Um, okay. okay. I'm trying to get myself out of here. And, uh, I'm doing it as. Yeah. Because I'm in a live have meeting. To, I guess I can follow on. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, next, we have um, Common Vic Annual Entertainment License. And. Okay, I'm gonna have to go over here. I, I can't get myself out of out of that screen. Sorry about that at home. I, I think I'm still in here, right? Right. Lace Pizza and Pub. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yep. Just click to the side. Just click on the next one there. Oh, okay. And that'll that'll bring me yeah. over there. Okay. Sorry. Yep. There we go. All right. Thanks, Deb. There thanks, you go, Deb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look at you, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> New skill. <laughs> Hi there. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Okay. So, uh, yeah, next up we have the Common Vic Annual Entertainment Automatic, Automatic Amusement and Pool Table License Applications for Lace Pizza and Pub at 94 Washington Street. Yes. So, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us. Uh, yes. So, my name is Chad McGrath. Um, I currently own and operate a restaurant in Taunton. Um, we, Chicky, old Chicky Flins, I keep calling the Chickies, uh, came up, and this is where we want to be. Uh, I live in Mansfield. My wife and I both grew up in the and South Wobble area. Um, I live on the Mansfield Foxborough lines. Like this, I, we kind of went into Taunton because it was like turnkey and easy, ready to go. So, it was just there. But now this place came up, and it was like, five minutes from my house. I'm like, this is absolutely perfect. Um, it's where we want to be. So basically, um, just kind of, we just, it's going to be more of like a basis on pizza. Um, kind of wanted to have like a town spot type of feel, uh, more of a family place. We are going to go with like one game in the pool table, just because there's a game room like set there and there's not really much else we can do with it. So we're kind of just going to try it out. Um, on just see how it goes. Um, if it doesn't work out, we might end up taking it out of there, but and doing something else with the room, but um, I think I think it'll be a great great addition to Foxborough. Absolutely, and everybody loves that laced pizza. Exactly. I grew up in Stoughton. <laughs> I'm surprised. I, no I, I could throw a game. rock at the town spot from <laughs> yeah. where my where my parents' home is. So uh, great. And um, let's see. So we're, we're going to have you're going to have a pool table. You're going to have um, is it a, um, a pinball? Uh, oh, golden tea. No, okay. No, yeah, it's just an um, arcade game. Like, okay, yeah. all right, perfect. Okay, anybody have any questions? 
Uh, just because I hadn't had a chance, where on uh, Washington Street will it be? What f facility? The old Chickie Flints. Oh, Chickies. Yeah. Okay, I didn't catch that. Okay, great. Yeah. Good. Nice to see something something going, going in. There. Yeah. It's, been, it's yeah. been a lot of painting. It's been a lot of. <laughs> A lot of orange. Well, what color is it going to be? Uh, so there, we're redoing the siding, so we're just going to do the, the siding is going to just be like a dark gray, but um, the inside, we have, it's a couple different shades of gray, but the whole inside, top to bottom, is orange. <clears throat> so it's like I've been painting for weeks and weeks and weeks, and I just feel like no matter what, I see orange every time I go in there. <laughs> like you just can't get rid of it. But <clears throat> when are you hoping there. to open? So we're hoping um, to open up as soon as we can just for takeout while we wait for the legal license. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of like to get the pizzas out there. And then once the legal license comes in, we're going to open full bore. Hey, look. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you said <clears throat> I forgot that. So you'll be back for the liquor license. Just want to do like a soft opening. And, yes. And come on back afterwards. Yeah, we will, it'll just be takeout. Yeah. It won't yeah. be anyone. Yeah. Through staff? Through yeah. the chair? So is that a no, going to be a node license or a specific... It will not. It'll be a transfer from Chickie Flynn's. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. yeah. Was, oh, so they never said return it back. No, they did not. Yeah, they actually renewed for 2024, and I think we're only open one day. Okay. All right. Uh, so they, uh, we were waiting on paperwork for a while. Actually, just sent it to me today, so I'll print okay. it and drop it off to you tomorrow. But um, we were waiting on paperwork from, it was originally, everything was in Chickie's, but they didn't send me the paperwork they were supposed to. <laughs> but she had to wait for her compliance letter from DUA, so I just finally got that today, so I'll be able to submit everything and be back in a couple weeks with that. Awesome. Good. And then and then all, all the stuff, you know, tip certified, all that yeah. stuff. You're already operating a, yeah. a, a restaurant, so. Okay, are you closing great. the other one and moving everything here? Or are you um, we're we're kind of like going to see how things goes there. I'd like to just hire someone to run that place so I can focus on, on, on here. Um, it, you know, it's just more or less we're gonna see how it does profit-wise. If it's not making money, then gotcha. I'd rather be here. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and if it is, and you have somebody that you can, I'm in the, I've, I've been a server almost my whole yeah. life, so, and you have somebody you can trust to run it, run it. Yeah, I do, and that's, you know, you that's know? the plan in place yeah. right now, so. Yeah, nice to say two locations, That's right? what I wanna do, <laughs> that's my plan, so. Great, all right. Motion to approve a common, vi oh, what is this? Common visual license application for Laced Pizza and Pub located at 94 Washington Street. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you guys very much. <clears throat> oh, wait. Oh, wait. We're oh, not done. More. I'm not done. Sorry. Motion, oh, yes. motion, yeah, motion to approve definitely. an annual entertainment license application for Laced Pizza and Pub located at 94 Washington Street. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Wait. No. Motion to approve automatic amusement license application for Laced Pizza and Pub located at 94 Washington Street. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve a pool table license application for Laced Pizza and Pub located at 94 Washington Street. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yes. Good. Thank you very now, much. Now you're <laughs> Good all luck. set. Good luck. Good luck. Okay. okay. Heather's here. Heather here. We're up to um, renaming booth two. Could you zoom in along? Yeah. That wasn't good, good to get, but she may come in. If not, it's fine. Hi. Hi. Heather. Heather Harding, 14 North High Street. Um, so you may be wondering why we're here. Um, Paige, Katie, and I were reading through the policy, and I'm sure you guys know the town naming policy. All it really says is that after the board with the jurisdiction care, custody, and control over the asset approves a recommended name, the recommendation for naming the town asset will be submitted to town meeting for approval by a majority of the vote. But in the past, we've always come to you, so we just figured as a point of information, you know, it'll be on the warrant in the fall, but we thought we'd come here because, you know, get the word out to people, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, just by way of context and background, at our August Recreation Board meeting, after the 60-day open comment period, our board voted unanimously to name Booth 2 the Janetti Bernstein Field. That will be our third field of our 15 fields that we have that we've named in the last 35 years. So we don't do it a lot, but 
Um, the one we did before that was the Bayek Field, which was booth one. So the baseball board also met separately, and they voted their full support. So, you know, folks that came to us spoke on behalf of them, you know, saying things like these two gentlemen along with Stu Bayek, you know, epitomize the essence of coaching. And, you know, we know that um, they coached thousands of kids in Foxborough, and some of them went on to play in college. And um, one of them is current, one of their sons is currently the, one of the coaches at the high school. So it's kind of a little bit of a legacy there. Um, Bob, I don't know if you guys know, but he was also on Adcom. He was the treasurer. Um, you know, John made some financial contributions as well, and it's his son, Daryl, that is the coach at the high school. So um, Brendan is here because he's one of the ones that spoke on behalf of it at Recreation. So I just asked him if he wanted to come and say a few words to you guys. Sure. So uh, my name is Brendan Schlander. I live at uh, 15 Leonard Street, but grew up about 100 yards from this room on 26 South Street. Um, I graduated from Foxborough High School in 2007 with both Daryl Giannetti and Ed Bernstein and was coached growing up by both John and Bob Bernstein. Um, you know, when I saw, and I also was coached by Stu Bayek and grew up with his son, Nate. Um, when I saw the booth one named after uh, Coach Bayek, it, it just made sense that, you know, we had also tragically lost uh, John and Bob and to you know, incorporate their legacies there as well, as long as there was a field open for, for renaming. So, um, you know, I, Daryl's been one of my best friends since I was five years old or at any each other's weddings, you know, I was friends with Ed in high school as well. Um, and it's, I just think it would be a fitting tribute to two men who gave a lot to this town and the youth of this town. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, Okay, I'm going to start, and, and, and just so everyone knows, sometimes you have to ask the hard questions, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so, first of all, uh, the naming of a field is, in me, one of the biggest honors that you could give anybody. So, I guess my only question is, I, I myself, Doc can probably, you know, back me up, um, we were very involved in naming the Jack Martinelli Field. So I guess e even though this isn't, um, you know, this is an our decision, you know, that we're gonna vote yes or no, it is our decision to move it forward to town meeting. So, you know, a couple of things I'm gonna say, you know, I, I looked at our, our naming policy that was adopted in 2021 um, I was on the board then, so I have to take some ownership from this. I, th I think um, as we read this, you know, someone, someone drafted this for us, the board looked at it, and we were all like, oh, okay. Uh, I, I guess I, I'm, I'm wondering if you can give us a little more background of, of the process by the rec board. Sure. I, I mean, we, ha we had to jump through hoops to get the Martinelli, and this was a man that coached on that field for 36 years, now he's up to 42 or 43. Um, the, the school committee was the one that made the decision. I, I do have some, pro which is, isn't anything to do with you guys tonight. Re-looking at this, I have some problems with our policy, but th that's not for discussion tonight. That's something for us to discuss later. And so I'm wondering if we can, um, I'm trying to be this as respectful as I can, because um, I, I did do a little homework looking into both gentlemen, both stand-up guys for sure. I'm not sure, and it, that can be, if, if we move it forward, that'll be decided at a town meeting, if they're, if they're worthy of a field being named for them. I, so, I, I guess, Brandon, right, not Brendan? Brendan. Brendan, Brendan, Brendan. Yep. okay. So I guess, you know, I coached for many years. I coached softball, mm -hmm. coached field hockey at the high school for 10 years. I have kids that still call me coach to this day. Uh, I, I, I know your thoughts because you wrote this letter. I think for me, I, I need to hear a little bit more, you know, because I, I have kids that would talk wonders about me, but I don't think anyone's going to name a field after me. So I, I think maybe that's when I'm going to turn to Heather 
and um, it maybe just get a little more, you know, how what the vetting process was, sure. just to so we have a background of that. Is that fair enough? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, perfect. So we never really had a policy before this one. In the past, recreation would just kind of kind of name things if we wanted to name them. You know, I mean, there was no policy. So we got this policy. So pretty much, we followed it. We did a little. I agree with you, the policy is a little vague, which is why we're here. I mean, the policy doesn't say that it we have to come to the Board of Selectmen, and in fact, it doesn't say it's a Board of Selectmen article, so it could just go to town meeting as a Board of Recreation article, but all of this is gray, so we thought we're gonna err on the side of caution and come here. Yeah. So pretty much we do what we do with everything, which is we put it on the agenda initially, um, you know, reach out to people, come to the meeting, speak to the board. Then we had a 60-day open comment period where our board members could reach out to whoever they wanted to, ask whatever questions. Baseball board vetted it separately from us. So uh, you, you just reach, you reach out, there's no, like, there's notification no, of the public? Well, it's posted on, yes, we posted it on the website and everywhere as an agenda item. We had a discussion at our rec board meeting in June. Brendan was there, there were some other people there. So we discussed it at our public meeting in June. Then we announced we'd have a 60 day open comment period for anybody to tell us the good, bad, the ugly. Um, and then we met again in August. By the time we met in August, I believe the baseball board had already voted, but it could be, yeah, they, no, no, I don't know that they had voted. I'm not sure when they voted because I don't know what their schedule is. But the baseball board separately met, voted. That was reported back to us that they voted to support it. We voted unanimously to support it. I then called Katie and said, you know, policy doesn't say it, but we came in front of the selectmen for a Bayek and for a Deb's Pavilion, so we want to come in front of the selectmen again, and here we are. Can, <clears throat> and again, I, I don't know either gentleman, so I, I, I couldn't speak to anything on this, but as far as um, when you read our policy, it says, you know, basically um, the, uh, I think the wording that they use is to acknowledge individuals who have contributed in a significant way to the public. Mm -hmm. So I looked back at what we've named in town as an example. Um, the first thing I'm concerned about, quite honestly, is the Booth area was named after an individual, Wilford Booth, um, who basically was the founding part of recreation. Um, 32 years on the board, um, it was, he was given credit for basically getting that whole area built, filled in, and turned into uh, the fields and the complex. They talked at the time, it was actually, uh, the organization was the playground committee, but what they referred to as playgrounds back then were the fields, because everything that you read about it was they were talking about the baseball fields, the uh, lacrosse fields, stuff like that, uh, that were developed during his time frame. Um, and so obviously this place has already been named for somebody. And I am concerned that you know, we've already kind of chunked off a piece of it, uh, you know, and, and I knew Stu very well, and I, and I quite honestly, very supportive of, of what was done at that time. We didn't have our policy in place at that time. And quite honestly, I didn't even know who Wilford Booth was at the time. So it's kind of gotten lost, I think, over the years um, of potentially, you know, that this is really has been named for somebody. And I'm a little concerned that we're chunking it down to what the only thing that he's going to be, the name is going to be for is the, the, the playground area, which I don't think is really what his whole, you know, thing was. Well, the complex is the Booth Recreational Complex. That would never change. And isn't the Babe Ruth Field Booth Field? Well, the Babe Ruth, we just call the Babe Ruth. Okay. It doesn't have a name. But, like, we have Rodman, obviously. So right now, down there, all we have is Rodman and Bayek. And, and then, Igo and the softball not fields? ours. Oh, well. Okay. Igo is not ours. St. Mary's isn't officially named that. We call it that because it's near St. Mary's, just so people know what it is. So, um, yeah, we don't take it lightly either. I mean, we have 15 fields, and this would, in our history, be the only third field we've ever named. I don't think we would ever consider changing the name from the Booth Recreational Complex. I mean, that's what it is. Um, you know, but basically, the idea was brought to us through all of our vetting. Nobody came forward and said, I have a better idea, or I have a different idea, or I have an issue with it. Um, people brought up other names like um, Chet Harrington, but we have a bench going in for Chet. That's what his family requested. So, you know, we didn't have any reason. Everybody that came forward said both these guys made contributions. We did talk about, because they were tight, 
with Stu, you know, did we want to maybe do like dugout plaques on booth one? Um, but, you know, the guys that requested it said, oh, we'd, we'd prefer to have a field. So, and we, you know, from what everybody said, there was no reason to say no. It <clears> was kind of my son's time, but I don't really, and I really know Stu mostly through that. So I guess I have two follow-ups to that. The first one is if we could get kind of what is the Word this timing that these individuals actually put into um, youth baseball. Um, you know, again, significant is not did it for five years in my mind, or you know, yeah, because you're looking at, like I said, when you look at the list that, that's been done in town, um, obviously, as I said, you had booths for 32 years on that committee. Um, the John J. Ahern, he was 20 plus years as an educator, um, you know, uh, Stather. Uh, who was credited for starting youth soccer um, in, in town. Martinelli, 36, now 42 or three. Sam Burns, obviously, we know, you know from the Progeria side and, and what, you know, uh, the life lessons he taught this town. Steve Massey, 37 years in, in music. Um, Andrew Gala, 30 plus years uh, for this room. Uh, McGinty, obviously tragically killed in the Twin Towers. Um, you know, Deb. 20 some odd years as the recreation de uh, director. Um, Sharon Watson, uh, the pavilion, uh, quite honestly, that whole area, if it wasn't for her, we probably wouldn't know it. Um, so that's what I, I, I look at those, and to me, that's significant. Okay, so I guess what I'm trying to understand is what is significant in your mind. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I would say both were over a decade, not just Little League Baseball, but uh, Foxborough Youth Basketball as well, Foxborough Youth Football um, for. Uh, Mr. Gennetti, um, you know, they, and then, you know, they've, they stayed involved in, you know, in the town for years after that. I know Mr. Uh, Bernstein continued to work as a youth umpire. I don't know how many years he did after his, you know, his two sons uh, moved on, but um, it, it, like we, said, you know, the Janetti's family is still very involved in Foxborough baseball. He's the he's the pitching coach with with uh, Derek Seuss as the head coach. Um, and, you know, Doug Seuss was one of the ones who spoke up in, uh, at the rec board meeting, um, you know, bet, betting for them. Um, so it was from the time that I met their sons, which was when I was five years old, until we were through high school that they were – yeah, involved in coaching in multiple sports. So and this is going to sound bad, I guess. I can't think of another way to say this. But, you know, I think all of us who had kids in town, I coached youth soccer from the time my son and daughter were very young through being on the board, through running the, the um, you know, uh, major tournament that raised most of the money for how the soccer thing ran. I don't consider myself as have, have putting in significant value to the program. I think I did my job as a, as a parent, and, and I think, you know, I'm not sure, I guess to my point and to what, what Steph was saying earlier, I, I'm not sure that this just rises to that level. That's, that's my only issue. That's a personal problem. It's not your problem, um, but that's kind of the way I look at it. <clears throat> yeah, to piggyback off of Bill. I, I kind of agree that it, it doesn't lend itself to that, in my mind, naming a field. I can think of two people off the top of my head now that I think that sh field should be named after some time down the road. I, I was thinking a bench would be perfect, but you brought up naming the dugouts on the Bayak field after them. To me, that is a perfect way to memorialize those two gentlemen, people every day is going to, you know, players every day are going into those uh, uh, dugouts uh, are going to see their names. But I don't, I have to agree with Bill, I don't see the <coughs> level uh, of naming a field I, after those two gentlemen. My retort would be that their coaching involvement no, was, no. No, no, was identical to Mr. Bayek's, the, set, the length of time and effort put in. That would be my... So, uh, is it okay if I say one, one quick thing, just because we're, it's kind of with this topic, then I'll slide <coughs> down to you. Um, and again, these are 
difficult words to say. You have to say them as respectfully as you can. You know, I, I, you know, when I when we saw this when it came came before us, of course, I you know, I I I didn't remember Bob at first, and then as I just was asking a couple of people, you know, I, I sat on the baseball softball board for about five or six years when my daughter was young. And I coached, and, and then someone said, don't you remember Bob? He was the treasurer. And I said, oh, that, that's right. I just, you know, uh, I'm getting up there in age. <laughs> so so, I, so I, I, I did what I, th the, the only little homework I could do, you know, you know, Googling just to, you know, and I, and I, I don't, I, I don't want to say any names because it wouldn't be fair to people, but I, I reached out to some people very involved in Foxville Youth Baseball. And um, while I, I heard great things, it's like I heard ones like, nice, great guy, you know, life of the party, you know, spent many hours watching his kids play. Um, all right, I, I'm just gonna say, because I'm just a person who tells it like, like it is. Um, you know, I, it, as you Googled, I mean, you know, Mr. Gennetti's obituary came up. I, I was curious when he passed, because I know they both passed, so I was just looking. Yep. I'll be honest with you, I, I read the obit and I saw things about him coaching football at Curry, I think it was Curry. Yep, he, did. he also coached him. I didn't see any mention of coaching baseball. I didn't see anything about Foxborough Youth Baseball, and as I saw Mr. Bernstein's, I know, I'm, I, I'm, and I don't mean to cross the line here, and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody, because I can see by looking at your face what these men mean to you, and so I, I just want to say that. I'm trying, it, but you got to realize, for us to get behind a field naming, so I'm, I, I, I'll do respect, and I'm sure, sure you know, I, I saw a mentioning of Foxborough Youth Baseball, and you know, and you know, and things like in lieu of flowers, make donations to Foster. You know, so I could see that connection. And I'm not, I'm not saying someone doesn't deserve it because it wasn't something in their obituary. But <coughs> you have to realize, for us to vet, to vet it, how we can vet it. These are the things I saw, and and I reached out to a number of people who are very involved in in Foxborough Youth Baseball, and uh, for Mr. Gennetti, I, I I heard. Like I said, great guy. You know, I heard a lot about his son. You know, now that his son's coaching, and for me, I, I can't. Those are his son's accomplishments, and there was nothing. Nobody said a bad word about either one of these guys. But then my head went back to trying to have a field name for Jack Martinelli. At the time, it was 36, 37 years. And, and I'll tell you, sitting in front of the school committee, we still had to jump through hoops. You know, they had they had a, a, a criteria, and it, it it was not it was not easy. And and we had to show up. And, and I, I think this is a little broken. And that's not your fault or or your fault, Heather, at all. This is this is broken. You know, and I mean, we had to go before the school committee, and showing up with players and 20 letters from coaches. We, you know, Mr. Redding, his, his biggest, you know, nemesis in Mansfield wrote a letter in support. And, and so I, for us, I don't, I don't see that. That's what I was kind of trying to get from you, Heather, is did you get at that level, like, and- We didn't, but we okay. didn't. So there's a little bit of a difference in the sense that, um, I'm going by, you know, anecdotal information that we were given. And yeah. it was more, I just noted a few of the comments down. It was more things like they epitomized the essence of a coach. Everything was, everything was spoken about the three of them, first of all, even though Bayfield was already named. But everybody kind of puts them all together. Um, you know, uh, they were long-term coaches over decades that focused on developing the players and their skills and their actions. They wanted them all to be better versions of themselves on and off the field. Many of their kids went on to play in college. I don't think they meant their kids. I think right. they meant yeah. players, Although, but um, well, no. two, yeah, and their kids too. No, but you know, not all of them. Um, they contributed in other ways to town. They were on AdCom. They were the treasurer for baseball. They made financial contributions. You know, those types of things. One of the things we thought about was um, 
you know, Jack's field, we don't have 15 football fields, right? Yeah. Right now, we have 15 fields. This will be the third that we're naming. So it's not like we take it lightly, but I don't know that a, a baseball field in a complex when we have multiple fields is the same level as the, the high school football fields. Yeah. Yeah. Or I guess it's the middle school, but you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, I but do, but I kind of I think it is. I know because what you're saying. It's, it's in, you know, in, per yeah. in perpetuity that yeah. you're basically saying that at this level, and, and again, you know, 10 years is a long time, but it's not really a long time. It will, and <clears throat> I will say, this is anecdotal, but um, there, Mr. Gennady's legacy continues to impact Fox River Baseball because there is an annual golf tournament in his honor that, that the proceeds do benefit Fox River Baseball. So just wanted to add that in. Yeah. yeah. So basically, we followed the, you know, the town's yeah. policy yeah. to the letter of the law. There was nobody that spoke about anything except in favor of it. So, and that's the only, I did, I did have a couple calls basically who, and it's, I don't know, because I, I don't go search your website to look for things that you guys are doing, so that, on me, yeah. that type of thing, but I, their question was, where was it posted? They never saw anything on this, and so I guess if we're going to the point, and we don't, we've never done mm -hmm. this in town, but I think if we're going to the point of naming something specifically for somebody, um, it really should be something that's very well publicized that people know we're going to do it and that's where your discussions are mm -hmm. and you would get people in. Now, you may have gotten everybody to say, oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're behind this type of thing. Mm -hmm. I still, I'm stuck, as it seems like a couple of the others are, with the significance. I do like Doc's idea as far as the whole thing with the Stubaic and the two things all being tied together as the threesome. Um, I could get behind that 100%, mm -hmm. but I think naming something as a, a, a fairly good-sized town asset is... Yeah. You know, I've only been here seven years, so I don't know some of the history here, obviously, that other people have. So I can't speak to the relative merits of anyone, you know, being suggested for a name. Having been involved in this kind of an issue before, though, I know family legacy is really, really important. So my question here is, to what degree, if any, has the Booth family been consulted in terms of any of these changes? I don't think there's any Booth family still around. Bob, that's why I'm asking the question. <laughs> yeah, not that I'm aware of. I, you know, because I, no, that's they, what you don't want to have blow up in oh your no. face, that all of a I, sudden, you know, a member of the Booth family or a relative comes forward and says, why weren't we consulted? Why are you doing this? Look at, look at what, you know, William, Wil Wilford Booth did. You know, yeah. in terms of that I don't that, think that that any of the Booth family is still around. In, we've in, we've in already fairness, we, we just got, Bill happened to find, we just got oh, this. yeah, I know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> when there was a tennis court, the, the Booth family tennis court, that was the top tennis court where the skate park oh, is yeah. now. And we took the sign off of that tennis court and put it down at the lower yep. tennis courts. You know, they may have wanted to be up top, but now they're down below. But, um, you, you all saw? Yeah. Oh, I just... I, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around um, the board, the rec board doing the right thing by, by the policy that was approved by this board. And yet, um, you know, it looks like um, their efforts might be in vain because people don't know um, everybody. And at some point, you got to. I think just have faith. We elect; they are all appointed by the board of selectmen, that whole committee, and they made a decision based on the information that they have and the input that they got um, to name this field with those two gentlemen's name in mind. Yeah, and that and that's fair, fair enough. Like I said, you, you have to, you know, um, like being being as respectful. I, I I'm just I'm just going to say it, and and you know. Um, there were people that I talked to who didn't didn't feel that this was worth. And these are baseball people. I don't know who sits. Guess what? People who sit on that board now. I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm just saying a what if. But as the years go on, I guarantee that a lot of people on that were not. On that board, of course, or, back or, in the nineties. You know, right. and, yeah. Right. You know, so, right. so again, these are the, just like us sitting here. These are the people right. who are okaying it. I, I'm get, I'm guessing that yeah, somebody came forward and some nice things were said, and um, but but I, 
I wouldn't be doing my job, and, and I'm going to say this in as, as respectful as I can. You mentioned the three of them. Two people I talked to really w separated them. And, and so I, I'm, I'm not going to get into how it was. I, I just want to explain to you where, for me, I'm not going to speak for the board, where I struggle a, a little bit with it. I, I love the, the idea of, of if, if, if you feel these three men kind of were together, I myself love that other idea. I mean, or, you know, I mean, I don't want to put you guys off. I mean, we have a town meeting, and then we no, have, we have a, a, town, a town meeting in the spring. I right. mean, well, is there any way we could back it off and readdress it? You know, well, here's I, the thing. I think it's the Recreation Board made the decision based on this policy, policy to bring the warrant article to town meeting for discussion and a vote. So the, the warrant, you know, the article will go forward to town meeting. We are not saying this is the be all end all and this has to happen and we're the ultimate authority and it's gonna happen. We're saying we followed the policy. Our board feels that this warrant, that this warrants being brought to town meeting as a warrant article, ADCOM will vet it, the town will vote on it and whatever happens will happen. We're not, gonna, we're not trying to control what happens at town meeting. We're just saying, based on the policy, based on the information brought to us, we feel that this warrants going to the next step, which is the town meeting warrant. Okay, and, and then I guess I'm just gonna also put out there that you know, this, this board can not want to put it on this warrant, and, and you have other things you can do, and so, I mean, that's also, I don't. I know. If, if I think, yeah. I think the I think the only sticking point is you follow the policy, but unfortunately, there are a few words in there that are up for interpretation, and significant contribution. The definition of, of what that is in your committee's mind versus our committee's mind. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it, it's yeah. it's vague. That's the only nice thing about the school one. To be honest with you, it's not vague. <laughs> it's so why very prescriptive. Adopt the school one. I mean, I'm just curious. Well, and you know something? <laughs> when when, like, when I saw this, and I, I started to read it, and like I said, I have to take ownership on it. I mean, and, and you do too, Doc. I'm okay? not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it was we adopted in 2021, <laughs> and so and I looked down and I said, oh yes, Jeff, you you were here for a year. Uh, the the, and I, I don't like to make excuses. The only thing I will say is, you know. Um, no, nobody on this board wrote these words. You know, it was it was it was drawn up and then given to us. But we 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 adopted us. it. So ownership. Yeah. You know, um, I, you know, in in honest to God, I think maybe just because this hadn't come before us since here. So as I went to read it and I said, vague, 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 and then all of a sudden in my head I'm going, oh my God, we jumped through hoops. This, you know, and listen, just my opinion. You know, we may look at this. Afterwards, I'll be honest with you. How the schools do it, and they have to—it has to go to the school committee. I almost would rather see this, and, and by, it, it's not going to be this group of people forever. I'd almost rather see a, a town, a town. Well, I think that's it. why it goes to town meeting. E exactly. So we're not saying it's done. We're not putting the sign up next week. We're saying yeah. we're moving it to the next phase yeah. in the policy, yeah. which is bring it to town meeting so that the citizens well, of the town I, I, can decide. Unfortunately, that wasn't where I was going to go. Oh. I, because the school committee makes that decision, I would almost rather see the board of selectmen but I make this decision and embed it, you know, and embed it all, all the way through. And, and I think... What happens is, and, and I don't know if that'll happen. I don't know if this board or anyone's going to agree with that. But then what that takes the emotion out of it. You know, like we're going to sit down, like like when we went in front of the school committee, we had we had the letters, whatever. We had to show the amount of years, and that one he had to be an educator. You know, there was you know that whole criteria. There's like almost really no. And again, this isn't your fault. This is, this is our fault. You know, mine and Doc's fault. You know. And so I would see, I would rather see this whole, you know, and then that takes the emotion out of it, you know, um, and, and of course these are all good people, but you know, when, when you sit here and say, you know, I've been best friends with his son since we were five, right? 
I know this is personal for you, you know, and, and, and it would be personal for me too. So I, I say that as a, as a compliment and what you're trying to do for someone that meant so much to you, I commend you for that because that, you know, we all hope that our, our children are, you know, there's somebody in their life that makes a difference, you know, and I think we all strive to try to be, like I said, I have, I have two kids that call me coach. I haven't, I haven't coached for Harley's 20, 18 years since I coached on that field hockey field. And they approach me and, and they call me coach. And I know those two kids and I know what I meant to them. And I kind of, that, that's why I feel it. I can, I can feel how important this is to you. I just don't know if you're, if, if the emotion is out of it, if it warrants that, you know, so yeah, like, like I said. emotion was out of it for the board. I mean, for the board members of recreation, you know, it comes to us because I think the school committee, and I might be wrong, but I think the school committee controls all the school's properties, right? Whereas on yeah. the town side, it's divided up. So like conservation controls conservation properties, recreation controls yeah. recreation properties. So I think that's why it starts with our board, but it doesn't end with our board. Yeah. That's just the first. Yeah. We recommend it go to town meeting and let the citizens of the town decide. Yeah. I mean, that's not, you know. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're at is, you know, the board want, wants to put it to town meeting and that's where we stopped it. Is, is there any way you guys would go back and look at honoring them with plaques instead? We did discuss that, and okay. that wasn't what was brought forward to us. So, I mean, I can... You well, can only work with what you brought. Yeah, with what, right. with no, what you have. No, that's not true. I yes. Mean, no, it's not. No. Well, no, of course not. <laughs> what, she, what, what they have in terms of um, they were asked. It was a particular ask. Agreed. Yeah. But they, they have the right to... Oh, they can negotiate. All, yeah, yeah. Options, yeah. But so. they can only... Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was asked at the rec board meeting. I gave my opinion on it, and you know, my opinion was that there's a field with there's one field that over there that has a you know generic name with a number attached to it that could be. Well, it's not really a generic. Name. No, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> that we just found. I'm out. saying. We just found uh, out. What I meant was yeah. that it's you know when I was growing up it was. Booth one, booth two, booth three. Like they, yeah. they weren't. And then now two of the three have names, one does not, and the two people being brought up are in line with, you know, the yeah. one of the uh, other fields naming conventions. So, well, and, and, and it, I, you know, that, that that's just just how life goes. I mean, like I said, I I I reach show to some pretty people that know everybody and. It, it, that wasn't the opinion I was getting. So that's where that's what I'm bringing forward. I don't know that myself. I you know I just I don't either. We yeah. can only go by what is presented to us, and based on everything that was presented to us, we felt that it should go to the next step, which is town meeting. Yeah. But we just feel the town should be uh, able yeah. to decide. Go ahead, talk. Yeah. I, well, I think we we've chewed on it. There's really no um, yeah. action that needs to be taken. My only suggestion would be if you're going to put it through to town meeting. Do it as a rec. Um, no, actually, we, we have to vote to, to, put it on the warrant. to put it on the warrant. Right, but wouldn't yeah. it come from rec? Like, uh, oh, oh, well. Well, it's going to come from rec anyway. Right. The warrant article is coming from rec. Right, I know we have to. The question is whether or not we'll put it on the warrant. Correct. Well, it, it, would, it wouldn't. But there are certain warrant items that come from selectmen, yeah. certain yeah. that come oh, yeah. from mm -hmm. zoning, I would say, oh, yeah. to make sure that comes yeah. from. No, it's not, yeah. right. no, but I think if. if if we do vote not to put it on the warrant, there's another avenue they'll yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, 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 we would not do that. Yeah. That wouldn't but, be another avenue from REC. Like, you're talking like a citizen's petition or something? Well, 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 well it wouldn't be from REC. Right. right, that's what I mean. Yeah. We wouldn't it do would, that. Would, I mean, would, our policy is we would put in the warrant article. If you guys don't want to put it on, that's up to you. That, yeah. that would be the end of it for us. Yeah. Okay. I well, mean, we see, wouldn't. Right. Well, and honestly. We're not going to go working around well, behind you. Yeah, but, but you know something? I. It, I kind of feel like, well, well, we'll take the vote, and I think if it does, if we do decide not to pass it forward, then I think there can be more discussion down the road. Like I, I you know, and if and if you're not going to make, you know, maybe, maybe, then maybe there is a second, you know, it, option. a second yeah. option, you know. But we're not voting today. No, no we're, voting on, we're voting on the warrant when the warrant comes up. Correct. Yeah. Right. right. This, yeah. So this is down but the just road. Just for information. Yeah. Just right. In case you guys had questions. Well, or whatever. well, no, well, no, but the warrant this, closes Friday. Well, right. we're not talking special warrant. We're talking. Uh, 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 is this on the warrant currently? 
No. It has a placeholder on the special town meeting warrant. So, uh, so I'm thinking uh, down the road. I wasn't thinking special oh, yeah. town meeting. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was thinking regular town meeting. Yeah, so the uh, question is whether or not we leave the placeholder. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so, so I guess, I guess if we aren't comfortable with it as, as brought to us, we could not put it on the warrant and maybe could come back with a, with a different spin or it could, or it could come back in the spring, you know, may, you know, e e you know, either, either way that, you know, I mean, I, that's what I would like to see myself. I'd like to see you guys maybe, that's just my opinion, you know, we're gonna vote. I, I'd like to see you guys maybe take another spin on it. And I mean, for, for me, I, I get how you want the field. I'm not gonna talk you out of that, but the, the plaques kinda, I, I kinda love that to think that their names would be on the same field. That's just my opinion. Can I ask a question? Sure, just cause I don't know. On the school side, like with the Jack Martinelli field, after the school committee voted, did it go to town meeting? It didn't, no. right? See, they're the be-all, end-all. We're not. We're just saying we yeah. think this is a good idea to take to the citizens to let the citizens vet it and let the citizens decide. Recreation doesn't have any desire to be the school committee and make yeah. a decision. Yeah. So we're just saying we want to take it to the citizens of the town and let the citizens decide, like we did with Debbie's Pavilion. Yeah. So there could be discussion on town meeting floor, and the motion could be, it could be amended, they could decide to do plaques, they could vote it up, they could vote it down. Yeah. We're just saying we want to bring it to town meeting, unlike the school committee where once they vote, that's it, you're done. Yeah. And we're, but I think and it we're just saying we don't agree here. with the, yeah. the yeah. It, it meeting the actual criteria. Mm -hmm. So that's so, the difference. So, with, so right now we're gonna vote on so included on the special town meeting, including or not including, yeah. including okay. or, or not right. including, and then it could it could come back in a different way, uh, you know. Let's, well, if they do yeah. a plaque or something, that doesn't come back to us. Oh, because you do benches and stuff. Oh. Everybody does oh, stuff oh, like oh, that. Oh. Well, it goes yeah. to Page. It doesn't go to you guys. Yeah. Like Page yeah. does the benches, yeah. I think. Plaques, right. no, let's, yeah, no, I think. Let's do a motion. Okay. Uh, I make a motion. What do I make a motion for? Ooh, to put it on or put it off. Um, no, you'd make a motion well, to, put to put it, put on, it on and, and we vote one way or the other. Um, I make a motion to put on the fall town meeting warrant the naming of the fields for Janetti and Bernstein. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? <clears throat> All those opposed? Okay. Please don't go away <laughs> feeling down. I, I, I am sure there's a way to honor these men. So, you know, just because we didn't feel it was it this way, there's a way to honor the men, okay. for sure. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you for your time. Yep. I'm still up, so I'm not going. Okay. Thank you, Brendan. And I do wish I had somebody that wanted to name a field after me. <laughs> you know something? You're, you're, yeah. you're a stand-up guy. <laughs> Okay. All right, Deb. All right. Let's Heather? See. I also said, all right, Deb. Yeah, I heard you. Well, she was at the meeting. She can, <laughs> I she thought can, I heard you. She can <laughs> chime in. <laughs> okay. So we just figured while we were here, we'd give you guys an update on the recreation department projects. So some of you guys know this, but the Mill Street redo is almost done. The final touches are being done now, like, you know, landscaping. We still have a wish list for up there, but they're big ticket items. Like, we want a lift for the pool. We would like to have Wi-Fi put in. But barring those things, we're in pretty good shape down there. I think you came to the ribbon cutting, right? Yeah. Is was somebody, was there supposed to be maybe some funds for a lift for the pool? Do I remember that or no? No, that's no. the problem. Oh. There are no funds for oh, the lift. Oh, okay. For the pool. Okay. We would like, maybe I mean, it's it was on our a, wish list. On the wish list. Okay. It's on the wish list. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Along with Wi Fi. So, okay. But, um, so that kind of, Mill Street's pretty much in good shape. Uh, at Payson, the pickleball courts are being heavily utilized. Um, they are requesting some lighting and a fencing, which we're looking at. We have some plans in the works to try to keep the dogs and the golfers off of our ball fields um, and give them a place to call home because that's becoming more and more of a problem. So we're trying to deal with that. 
Uh, a big thanks goes out to Youth Basketball, Matt Monaghan and his group, because of them, they're making a donation, and the basketball courts down there are getting a facelift, because once the brand-new pickleball courts went in, you realize just how bad the basketball courts looked. Um, so they're getting a, a facelift. And uh, all the field lights that are burnt out down there are being replaced. And let me tell you, that is not cheap. I mean, just the bulbs <coughs> to get the lift in and get those done. Last time it cost us $20,000. And it's one company, Island Lighting, that does it. And it is what it is. So that's um, another big hit. But, you know, you need lights that turn on. So as far as the... Is there any issue with lighting the pickleball courts as far as neighbors or anything? There's nobody near there. Okay. So, and they wouldn't be, we're not talking lights like at Ernie George or, you know, low upper, uh, lower pace. And we're just talking just, like, yeah. yeah. And they want a fence like so that they don't have to chase the pickleballs into the basketball courts. Oh. You aren't know, they just athletes? Like, yeah. Aren't they athletes? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. But, you know, they ask and the seniors kind of get what they want. So we're, we're trying our best down there. Yes. Oh, oh through the chair. Um, uh, speaking about pickleball courts, yes. it seems like, and we had this discussion last year, that when football starts, the outhouses leave that area and go down to, and I've had a couple of uh, people complain about the fact. Are you aware of that and yes. it's going to well, change? Yes, we have two more. Well, we don't control the outhouses for football. Yeah, but why do the ones at the pickleball, why did they leave? I have absolutely no idea, oh. but they're being put back. Okay. <laughs> we didn't ask for them to leave. They just left. All of a sudden, they were oh. gone. Okay. So we have two of them coming back there for the pickleball cuts. And if we need more than two, we'll get more than two. But they're not the best things to look at. Like no, we don't, no, you know, no so. but they're convenient because a lot of yes. pickleball. They do serve a purpose. So <laughs> right. we're going to try two. We think that will work. But if we need a fleet of them, okay. those was... pickleball cuts, I've never seen anything like it. The, the, the people that are waiting in line for those. We could have 20 cuts and they'd be all used. But Has everybody tried pickleball? No. Yes. No. You haven't tried it? No. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't either. I, I, I she's just, about to tell you she's not old enough. Yeah. But that is. <laughs> Which is why we need the outhouses down there. Be careful. Be careful what you say here. <laughs> the, um, I don't think we're going to get into pickleball tonight, but <clears throat> I know about the utilization of the pickleball course. Uh, it, it, do you have to be a Foxborough resident to schedule time on the pickleball courts? Yes and no. You, you do not have to be a resident because there's no one standing there checking IDs. Right. I mean, there's no way to enforce that. But there, it, it, like when we run our senior center things down there and there's certain times set aside. Friday mornings. The, yeah. Yes. The intent is that it is for our Foxborough seniors or there's some app, some Teams app that um, Maureen Dunphy on our board runs extremely well where you can put in there like I'm going to be at the field at 9 for any open play or whatever and other people can look. You can't reserve the court or anything but right. you know if you're going and you're just looking to pick up a game or whatever you can go. Um, you know we don't have a way to like limit if somebody drives over here from Mansfield. There's no one checking licenses and saying no you can't but every community has pickleball courts now so People tend to stay in their own unless, you know, you got a buddy from Mansfield and you say, hey, you want to go meet. So, right. Or you yours know. are better. Huh? Or yours are better. Or yours are better. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, there's really no way to, like, keep other people off of it, but we haven't had it become a problem. Right. Yet. Yeah. I no. mean, I don't want to get into the weeds. I think there's, yeah. there's more of an issue there than you might realize yeah. with out-of-town people. Yeah. And by the same token, a lot of our people go to other towns, too. Mm -hmm. So, like, a ton of our people go to, I think it's Sharon. Sharon. Like, yes, Sharon has really nice clothes. Right. So, if we start kicking the Sharon people out, Sharon's going to kick the Foxborough people out. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, it's kind of a reciprocal problem. Yeah. But we're, we're working through it with the pickleball craze. So, yeah. Um, as far as the booth, the booth project is, is nearing completion. The pavilion roof is going to be on this month. Uh, the dugouts are pretty much done, tennis court work has been done, basketball courts are done. The tot lot and the Highland Rink, we did have to bump to phase two. Some of the other areas cost more than we expected. Part of it was because of, you know, the municipal process, the prevailing wage, stuff we, our hands are tied about. So we did have to bump a couple things. Um, with respect to the skate park, between the grant we received the $27,000 donated by the new skate park group and the rec revolving fund. We are replacing the center ramp with a comparable piece, except it's gonna have skate light on it because everybody wants to try that out and see if it really is the way of the future or not. We'll see how it holds up. 
The park is being closed now because we have to remove the centerpiece that is in there. We have to make sure it's, you know, the fence has to be peeled back and that's got to come out. We're going to take the opportunity while that is closed. Joe Ahad's original skate park group is giving us the money to make repairs to any of the outer structures, which is really just kind of the sheet metal lifting. So it'll be like contact cement down with a flat screw going through it and a block underneath so that that they'll, it'll never lift again and hopefully we'll get some more time out of that. So that's all kind of being done now. Um, by the time that all gets done, that will bring the total spent to $118,000. Not counting uh, like time donations or in-kind services or anything like that, just cash going out the door. So it should put us in pretty good shape for a little while, we're hoping. In terms of other high priority needs, we don't have the funding for all of them, but you know we we have this list, <laughs> and um, we go over it every month or as things come up. And things that are a high priority for us right now are mosquito spraying at the fields, uh, the Highland Rink, and the Tot Lot because God bless them, they keep getting bumped every time we get a little bit of money. Those are the assets that get bumped and don't get done. The lights and the fencing for the pickleball courts some security cameras, a splash pad, or get our misting machine installed. You know, those are the kind of things that we would like to get done. Um, as you guys know, recreation is self-funded, program money, you know, for the programs we run. So, you know, when we look at our finances, sometimes we look at it, oh, Mark Craig is just lift it saying, he thinks that we, he's catching up and we might be able to come up with money for the pool lift. So you were asking about that, so anyway, I digress, but. Um, you know, we go through this, and if, and if you look on any given day, we range in our balance in our account anywhere from like 100000 which is our minimum. We cannot go below that. We have to keep that in reserve to, on a good day, 486000 But that 486000 doesn't count for all these things that are about to come out of it, because obviously we collect the money up front, and then we pay out all the expenses, and some of those expenses we don't incur until, you know, later in the year. So we very carefully review this list, and as we can check things off, we do. We would love to be able to just check off the whole list, but that would put us in the hole by $111,000. So we obviously can't do that. So we kind of break it down by what's recurring, what's a want, what's a need, what do we want, and we go over that. And that's kind of what we, the balancing act we go through every month at our rec board meetings. So um, that's kind of in a nutshell, where we're at, and we just figured we'd kind of update you, because people will come to us and say, what's going on with Mill Street, what's going on with Payson, what's going on the boot, what's going on with the skate park is a popular one. So we just figured we'd come here and give you guys an update. Boy, right. that original Mr. Booth would be shocked at what's going on down there. <laughs> oh, did you see Percy the, or whatever it was. Did you see the list of the things that they had back then? Oh, yes, I did see I was, that. I didn't even, <laughs> couldn't even imagine. But no. the, um, I did have a contact from somebody that I asked to call um, the rec Thing that was willing to volunteer to do some work on the hockey uh, thing. Yeah. So um, the Highland uh, Rink, you mean? Huh? The Highland Rink. Is that what the it is? The street hockey rink. Yeah. 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 Um, so hopefully they'll follow yes. through. And, and that needs some TLC. It and, keeps getting bumped what, because those people are not vocal about. Yeah. Well, it sounds like he's got a, a group of uh, people potentially will do the work if they someone will pay for the paint and stuff like that. So sounds good. Yeah. We're up for it. So. That's it. Just figured we'd give you all an update. Well, and and I, I I was I was actually coming up to go to the board of health meeting last night. I know. Night, so so I said, oh, I said, let me pop up pop up and because uh, because I haven't been, I haven't been to a rec meeting. Um, one thing I just knew I would see you tonight. Hmm. The, all the talk about the security cameras. So when we were replacing ours in Summerfield and in Cannon Forge at our clubhouse. I asked Bill, just out of curiosity, who the, who the yeah. town is. So the cameras that like you would use at the school, that's all around town? Yes, same Okay, same. I just, I just I, remember you told me. they're not using the same ones. Okay. Well, we're using whatever IT installed for us. Yeah, but it wasn't. Melissa, did, Melissa Mailing did it. Like with the, yeah, the, but I think there was the, they had given a quote initially to do the ones that, uh, that we use on all our buildings, which are much higher end. Yes. And they didn't want to pay the price okay. on that. So okay. we, yes. don't, we don't have the connectivity. Like the, the regular cameras, we can see throughout town. Yeah. Um, theirs is a separate subsystem. Uh, right. Okay. But. I did, well, you know, it made me think. So, so of course, we have the same problems. People throwing pool furniture in the pool and damaging and, and everything, over, you know, at our clubhouse. So I, I, was, I just said, oh, I'll see you tomorrow. I didn't. I think we got some quotes, and I think, the, I think we ended up using the, the name you had given me. But, of, of course, you know, that's 
it's a homeowners association. So, you know, we probably had a little money to spend. I was going to just mention, make sure you touch base with him, but I guess. Oh, we do. We do. We could do everything through the IT department. The problem yeah. is it's so expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have like the, six. The difference is, I will tell you, the cameras, the police love the cameras we have because we can hone in from a distance on things. And, you know, yeah. we've had so many instances where we've been able to help the police. I know. We, do, but, right. but it is the quality of the cameras, which is why the cost is so high. Right. So. Is there still tell you money too, available? We, we have somebody on our, on our <laughs> board. <laughs> Because there's a couple of places the cameras don't hit, and we've had, right. you know, we've had some problems. And they have, I know someone mentioned, we, we do have someone that he'll, he'll it's, and he hides it kind of in the woods so you mm -hmm. can't see it, and he puts one of those tripods. And we have caught, like, an, enough to be able to see a make of a car or once in a while a license plate or, and, and, we, and we catch the Foxville police driving through, you know, so that, you know, yeah. it's not the it's end on all. The list. We would love it. Solution, it's just that but. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And we don't have Wi Fi everywhere. That's the other problem. Yeah. You need to have Wi Fi. So, we used to have Wi Fi from, yeah. <laughs> no. from the neighbors. <laughs> we can't really do that. <laughs> that was 100 years ago. <laughs> now you're going to get us all in trouble. <laughs> On that note, all right. Well, have a good night, everybody. Thanks, thanks for the update and keep up the good work. We, for owned, sure. the, we owned the neighbors, though, too, so it didn't matter. <laughs> Okay, Every, I, I keep getting locked out here. Okay, well, not locked out, but. Yeah, you gotta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get. I was doing good earlier. I was, I was, uh, kept going. Okay. All right, so, so where are we after? Uh, oh, procurement. Here's Marie and Brandon. Everyone's favorite right. subjects. Yeah, sorry, Phil. <laughs> no. So, uh, we have, um, there's two policies in front of you. Um, I'll let Brandon take the lead on these, but basically, um, one of them we're required by law to have. Um, the other one is just to have a formal, um, you know, policy and procedure that all departments can follow when disposing of um, surplus supplies and equipment. Um, yeah. So the, for the first one, as Marie mentioned, is uh, related to the uh, procurement designer selection by the town um, departments. Um, the state essentially requires the town to go out and you know competitively procure a contract when the project meets certain thresholds. Um, in this case, the, the policy you see before yourself is essentially a copy of what the, the Inspector General's office puts out as a template, um, and this has been reviewed by town council. Um, so this document essentially lays out the, um, the steps that are needed for a department to go out and procure essentially an architect for a major building project or something like that. Um, one point to, to make is that the the approving body is the select board, and then the select board, according to this policy, will delegate essentially the the, the oversight of the process to the um, the the committee responsible for reviewing the qualification packages. And in this case, um, at least the way I understand the town, that is the permanent municipal building committee. Um, so that's the first policy. Um, the second one, as Marie mentioned, is sort of a recommendation. Um, this is essentially just outlining the processes for the disposal of surplus. Um, supplies, materials, and equipment. Um, there's essentially two two processes of, uh, depending on the value of what you're trying to get rid of. Um, this first process of for anything under 10,000 essentially is um, more of an internal process where we get some documentation on the finance end, which helps us with our capital asset tracking as well as um, you know interfacing with other departments to see if they could, for example, use a desk or an old set of chairs or filing cabinets, that sort of thing. If there's um, equipment or surplus materials that are equal to more than 10,000, there's a bit more of a formal process where this policy would essentially outline um, asking the town departments to go out to sort of a public bidding process where we essentially try to solicit um, bids for the highest dollar amount and then award um, the contract to that, that particular individual or vendor. And accompanying that is um, on the last page of the or second to last page of the policy is the just a form to kind of document all that in preparation for, for something like this moving forward. Can you just clarify for me the disposal value of 10000 Is that the current book value or is that the original purchase price? Current book value. Okay. And so I'm just thinking, I mean, a lot of times, I'm, uh, at least in my past life on the school side, um, obviously things like copiers we would trade in, I'm sorry, um, <laughs> just to... Um, make it simpler and try to get something back. Most copiers mm -hmm. weren't worth anything. 
a lot of times the you know if we're getting rid of furniture like a desk or something like that it's, it's really not something if, if it was good we wouldn't be getting rid of sure, it, yeah. <laughs> number one uh, but but number two it's something we've probably had for 15 to 20 years so uh, i have to assume the book value is, is it's pretty, pretty much zero yeah. now we do we do offer obviously to other departments if there are things that we have to see if they want them but uh, a lot of times by the time schools we're getting rid of them they're pretty much the dregs uh, at that point so yeah. i just wanted to clarify it wasn't the original price is basically no. whatever you have on the books at that point in time so they just need to contact you uh, for that yeah and, and with vehicles we usually trade those in when we go to or buy. we've been going to auction recently for auction to, as well, yeah. to, that's actually unfortunately in the trade-ins in the for this for the school buses i can speak to at least the um, companies that were selling us the buses were not giving us um, a fair trade value anymore they just really cut out they had us kind of booked so then we just turned around and said fine Yes, we don't get the, the discount for the school side, but the town gets the money back and it gets a higher rate of return, which, so that's why we went that route and it mm -hmm. seems to have been working pretty well, so. Thank you. Motion. Motions. Motion to approve the procedure for designer <coughs> selection by town departments. Second. Any other discussion? Can I nope. lose you all the way down there? Yeah, no. can, I, well, can I, one point of information. Sure. How does this impact um, having uh, the house doctor scenario? Um, it just has to be under the 30,000, 300,000. Yeah, I believe the house doctors, are, I believe, are capped at 50,000, if I remember the, the manual correctly. Right, so there's kind of a gray area between the 30 yeah. and the 50. I think with this process, you'd still go through the competitive um, evaluation criteria and so forth, so it would fall a similar way, but that would still be kind of be capped at that $50,000 estimate. I believe it's the construction cost associated with that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Motion to approve the procedure for disposal of surplus supplies. Oh, no, we, we didn't vote on that one. What? We didn't vote on the last one. We didn't vote on the last one yet. Oh, we didn't. I interrupted. No. Sorry. Um, that's right. Should Any other discussion? discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Here you go, Deb. I'm sorry. Right. Motion to approve the procedure for disposal of surplus materials, surplus supplies, materials, and equipment by town department's policy. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We should have put you at first on the agenda, <laughs> huh? All right. Yeah, she's thinking the same it's thing. It's fun yeah. listening in sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay. So um, just to, just for point of information, um, we don't have Paige with us tonight, so there uh, there is no town manager update. She will... Uh, we we have it. She kind of gave up the rest, but I'm sure we would bot, botch it. So there's no need to read it, and uh, you know, it'll give her just a longer town manager's update next meeting. How's that? So she's not with us tonight. If anyone you know noticed did, didn't notice that she's not here, uh, and then okay, so select board update. Um, I'm I'm going to say first under under new business. Of, of course, not something that we have to hit tonight or would I, I would I would love us to have a little more discussion about this policy yeah, at absolutely. some point we'll you will put it put it on the, on the agenda at some point and we can kind of hash it yeah. what, you know what's good and what you know well, get a so. copy of the school committee and uh, not reinvent the wheel yeah exactly um, is there uh, uh, just mention that I, I believe we had a successful uh, JC's car show, right? This this past weekend, and I heard nothing but all all great things. No, um, I don't any anybody. Uh, not not necessarily my thing, but I, I could see comments on Facebook. People really enjoyed it. Uh, anybody have any anything else for um, either new business or old old business for? <coughs> uh, just an update on the audit uh, bid. Um, we met yesterday actually to uh, go over the RFQ. And uh, we agreed that it's ready to be sent out, I think, uh, I think on uh, September 20th, 2024. Okay. So. Great. Well, and, I, and I guess the only other thing, a, uh, look, how about them patriots, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if we, I don't, listen, the biggest fan that I am, I, I, I was a little shocked on, on Sunday. And uh, obviously this, just so people know, home openers this week, and maybe they can repeat, but, uh, it was a good start. Yeah, it was a good start. You got it. Anybody else? Nope. Nope. All right, Deb, we have some action items. Yep. 
Motion to accept a $600 ice cream donation from Clay Subaru to support recreation department programs. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Accept the donation from an anonymous donor in the amount of $100,000 to the Foxville Police Department Gift Donation Fund. Oh, did I do that right? Yeah, I did. No. Second. Any discussion? It's a lot of money. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, I guess uh, we're going to make sure that that this don donation is with gratitude, with gratitude, with gratitude. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the only thing I would I would add. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to accept accept the donation from an anonymous donor in the amount of one hundred thousand dollars to the Foxville Fire Department Gift Donation Fund. Second. Any other discussion? Okay, and ditto for my first com my right. my first discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I think it's just worthy to note that it's just that the applicant doesn't want to have their name out there. It's not that it's um, anything that's tied to anything that's going on in town. Yeah, and, and to, to tag on to that, you, you know something, um, uh, whether it's $100,000 or $100, any, any donation to any good cause here in town is, um, is well thanked from this board as well as the people in town, just to add that. Okay, Deb. Motion to approve the use of public way application for the Knights of Columbus annual Tootsie Roll Drive on October 5th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the corners of the town common. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion to approve the extended hours request for Foxville VFW post 2626 located at 337 Cocasset Street to serve alcohol on October 20th starting at 9 a.m. as the Patriots game is played in London. Second. Um, under, under discussion, uh, just, just throw, throwing out uh, just to uh, businesses in town that are looking for um, extended hours to, so we don't uh, throw that at Katie one at a time. If uh, pay attention to the schedule, and if there's a request you want, please uh, get hold of Katie and get those all in. So maybe we can do them all at once as, as they come in if they haven't already. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve the select board meeting minutes from August 12th. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Second. Excuse, uh, excuse oh, me. Am do, I not doing Do we miss? Did I miss something? KSC Tootsie Roll? Nope. Nope. No, 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 we didn't. Okay. We'll send you some Tootsie Roll. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> yep, seconded. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank Good you, night, everybody. everybody.